Hey everybody, Jason Wright with another episode of Threatwise TV. Very excited about this. I get excited about all of the episodes. That's that's true. But this one is very special, and I'll tell you why. Because we're talking to Duo, the most recent acquisition, a huge security acquisition for Cisco Technologies, and bringing a whole new way to access applications securely and ensure that we get the right people in the right places with the right devices. And to talk a little bit more about that, I've brought in Ash Devada, Head of Products for Duo. Thank you, Jason. Thanks for having me. Welcome to the family, man. Oh, yeah. So Very we, excited to be part of the family. At time of filming, we just closed the acquisition about a week ago. So you're brand new. It's your first time on campus. Yes. I mean, I'm figuring out building 19 versus building yep, 8. All the buildings. <laughs> you got your you got your Cisco swag and yep, your water bottle. I got bottle. my Cisco water bottle. Got my Cisco badge. So I'm using WebEx Teams now. Excellent. Well, how, how quickly until we get Duo wrapped in and, and used in the Cisco environment? Uh, we're working with the Cisco IT. Yeah. It's on, on its way already. Uh, so tell us a little bit about Duo. A lot of our users hadn't heard of the company before. I'm sure some have. But tell us, what is it that uh, you guys do? So Duo uh, is a cyber security company. Mm -hmm. We're 100% cloud-based. Yep. And we focus on securing access. Anytime an organization's employees try to access corporate data or applications, we make sure that access is secure and safe. So many of our viewers, I don't think, would be a stranger to two-factor authentication via dongles, codes, yep. text messages, slidings, fingerprints, and all kinds of things. So what exactly do you guys bring to the table that's new and different? So two-factor authentication is how we started the company. Mm -hmm. We're very well known for MFA, multi-factor authentication, or 2FA. Mm -hmm. And we made it extremely easy. You know, Something that took six months in the past for an organization to deploy, we shrunk it down to literally a couple of days. Wow. And in the last few years, we've been building on top of MFA to understand what devices people are using to log in. Okay. Are the devices safe? Are those devices managed by your corporate IT? Can the device access salesforce.com as an admin? So we're looking at the device posture, and based on that, either grant access or deny access or give a warning or, or notification to the user. So I'm hearing getting a, a lot further than just an authentication challenge and starting to profile the user that's accessing and I think I heard like various levels of access based on different applications and different users and, and even devices maybe? Yes. So it sounds like the whole enchilada, <laughs> right? Yeah. I mean, if we had that, would we not need other security technologies? I, I wouldn't say that, but it significantly reduces the risk profile. I wouldn't either. I was leading you, so that was the right answer. <laughs> so we're in agreement for that okay. one. But yeah, but this is going to be another great level of security, I think, that we put in there when we can do that. And we've been doing some of those things with our own identity and policy access management controllers and things like that. But this will be uh, fantastic. Um, I, I would love to see a demo. I know you've got a couple of use cases to show us, right? Yes, yes. All right. So let's, let's what, what I look. configured is just the basic workflow of how an end user's experience is. Okay. Again, MFA is pretty interesting because it's one of the very few security tools that an end user interacts with every day. Sure. So we put a lot of focus on design. Yeah, and I mean, we talked earlier about security and convenience can be mutually exclusive, and yeah. I've used some of those things, and sometimes the yeah. code didn't come in time, or it didn't go in, it gets a little frustrating. So that's something that you guys have been working on specifically to address, right? Yes, yes, we, we focus on design a lot. For example, we have a one to five ratio of designer to engineers. That's fantastic, so trying to make it much less mutually exclusive and easy for everyday users to, yeah. to be a part of the security yeah. equation. Getting security usable is an extremely hard problem, and, mm -hmm. and that's one of the key things we focus on. All right, so, excellent. So let me so show you the demo. Uh, in this case, I'm just like showing you how a user would log into Office 65, okay. a cloud application, and how Duo would be plugged in. Okay. You know, I'm typing in my username and the password. This is your typical primary authentication step. Mm -hmm. And what you see now is a Duo's authentication prompt. All right. So it's telling the user that they need to go through the second factor, and it's giving the user a bunch of options. The most popular second factor authentication method we have is called push. So let me click on do a push. And on my mobile device, you see that I got a notification. Okay. And I'll open it. And it needs biometrics for me to actually see the notification. Right. And that's a policy you can set up. Let me give my face ID. You know, I feel like James Bond every time I do this. <laughs> I can deny this if I would want to, uh, right. if I did not request the access. And if I deny it, it'll send an alert to our IT team. Right. In this case, I'll cancel and just approve. And on my laptop, you see that I'm logged into and Office 65. In. OK, so we had a pretty standard second factor authentication, but it also made you authenticate to your device before it allowed you to approve the authentication challenge. Yes. 
So it's almost three factor there. In case you know someone steals your phone, right? Absolutely. Uh, it's making sure uh, there's a additional factor to log into the device itself. All right, excellent, nice and solid. Love and it. obviously, we're now part of Cisco, and I want to show a Cisco use case and workflow how it looks like. Love it. We have almost five thousand customers that are using Duo to protect their end users when they log into Cisco VPN. All right, so already a, a handful of customers that are using this as a second factor yeah. for VPN access. Yes, so All it's right. almost 5,000, so a lot more than a handful. That's, that's a few handfuls, yeah. a bushel, man. <laughs> <laughs> so um, in this case, logging into a Cisco VPN, let's say I'm trying to access my corporate headquarters network, Okay. and I log in, and again, it's giving me the Duo auth prompt. I say, send me push notification. Again, the whole thing, I get a notification onto my phone, I tap it, give face ID, and I approve, and I'm in, that's it. Okay. So no hassle of looking at a number, typing it in, and worrying about additional threats, uh, like man-in-the-middle attack. Yep. So push is the easiest and safest way to actually authenticate into applications. Absolutely, okay, I get that. Very straightforward, I'm with you so far. Yeah, so I wanna show you another scenario. Okay. Uh, I downloaded a really out-of-date Firefox onto my machine. Gotcha. Just for the demo, so don't tell my IT team about it. I think the word might be out by this point. But yes, yes, okay. that's okay. So I'm, controlled environment. Yeah, and so I'm using Firefox out of date browser now to log into Office 365. Mm -hmm. Again, the same username, same password. This is the same application that you logged in earlier. Yes, exactly. Okay. But now we're doing it from an out of date browser. Yes. Alrighty. And in this case, what you see difference is it's telling me that my device is out of date. Right. And it's giving me options to update it, and it'll walk me through how to update my machine. So in a very non-intrusive way, we're telling the end user that something is wrong, your machine is not complying with the carpet policy, and giving them the option to do the right thing. But if I'm like a typical user, I'll say, yeah, I'll I don't care. Click off. Yeah, I'll not even read it. Uh, I'll approve push notification, and I'm into my application. Okay, so we did allow, even though we're an outdated version yeah. of the browser. So it's the risk, right? If you're logging in from an out-of-date device into a cloud application, a SaaS application, the risk is relatively low. So. Again, all these things are things you can configure in the policies. In this case, I logged in into a Cisco VPN, and it's saying that I cannot log in because my machine is out of date. All right, so now we're starting to see you going beyond just the authentication mechanism and the, and the challenge, getting into profiling the device, the applications, what you're running on the device, and is all of that matching corporate policy before you allow access. Exactly, All exactly. Right. That's, a, that's a much deeper level. You know, it, the, the whole idea is some organizations say, if the user wants to log into, let's say, Cafe Menu, mm -hmm. or the Christmas Party Database, yeah, you can log in with any machine you want as long as that's an isolated app. Sure. But if you're logging into a business critical application, you have to follow a certain compliance requirements. Right. And your mission better be up to date, uh, have AV on it, and maybe actively managed by corporate IT. Okay, now that sounds like a, a large enterprise type of deployment where they're very concerned with security and they have people and resources to, to do things like that. But we span the entire spectrum of customers for this technology, yeah? Yes, yes. I mean, we have more than 12,000 customers across the world. Okay. They range anywhere from 20, 30 people organizations like hedge fund companies yeah. or mom and pop stores yeah. all the way to some organizations with more than a million users. Wow. So our platform is extremely scalable. Uh, we have a lot of universities using us, a lot of tech companies, a lot of healthcare organizations, a lot of financial services. So almost every organization out there needs basic MFA. Yeah. It's one of the basic security controls everyone needs. I and told we just my made family to easy. turn it on wherever they can to enable you know text message notifications to come down. But even consumer users could go out and, and, and sign up and, and use this technology as a second factor, huh? That, that's a good point, yeah. Yes, they can. You know, uh, When I tell my friends that I work in cybersecurity, they say, oh, you know, what should I do? And I tell them, hey, <laughs> two basic things. One, enable MFA for every account you have. Facebook, Google, Gmail, anything you have. Mm -hmm. The second thing, just keep your OS and browsers up to date. Yeah. If you do those two basic things, you're significantly reducing the risk for the attacker. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so customers can learn a little bit more. We still have the Duo website, and that's going to be up for a long time. Yes, yes. Duo.com is still live. It'll be live, and uh, people can go to Duo.com. We're very transparent as an organization, so you can read all the technical details, all the tech docs on Duo.com. You can also sign up for a free account. Excellent. You know, it's like signing up for Gmail. Yeah. Uh, it literally takes a couple of minutes, and you can start looking at the policies, deploy it for your own servers if you're a geek and you have those things at home. Yeah. And you can even use it for your Facebook login. Outstanding. Well, that sounds exciting. I'm going to send my family out there as soon as I get home. 
Maybe I'll even call him before we get there. But th <laughs> thanks so much, Ash, oh, for it's coming pleasure, on Jason. showing this us to us. And welcome to the family, man. We're oh, glad very to excited have you to be here. here. Thank All you. Right, us too. All right. If you want to learn a little bit more, duo.com, D-U-O.com. On the website, we'll get you a lot more information and even free trials that you can sign up for and learn a little bit more about this exciting technology. And keep an eye out for integrations as we move forward with our, the rest of the Cisco security portfolio. You're going to see a lot coming. We're very excited about that. But I can't tell you about it yet, but when we do, we'll have an episode here on ThreatWise TV. Thanks for tuning in.